date it's 2017. By 2018, April, we will be seven years down the line since they stuck a drill into Blackpool and caused earthquakes. And there is no fracking production yet. And the only reason for that, the only reason, because each year, and I remember Quadrilla saying it in 2012, 2013, next year we'll be in full production. We will have a full production site. Then 2015, then 2016, then 2017. And so here we are and there is no full production site. Yes, they've tested, they've prodded, they've poked, they've got all over the place, but there is no production site. And the reason for that is that there are people like us all over the country who stood in resistance to this. And what started as three small groups back in 2011 has now reached more than 400 groups across the country. If they move a rig, we move a camp. If they put a council planning objection in, we bring people to object, a council plan in, we bring people to object. And across the country, people of every age group, every social sector and every ability have found a way to be involved in this fight. And you know, we find our slowest slow walkers for the front of trucks come from our older generation, from our disabled. There is everything for every generation and every ability. And there is no reason not to be involved in this fight. This is a fight that whether you're Labour, whether you're Green, whether you're Lib Dem, whatever you are, you can require air and water. And you require agriculture for the future. And to abstain from being in this fight is to abstain from your obligation as a parent, as an aunt, as an uncle. Whatever your role is, you are going to let down the next generation if you don't find your place in this. But there is a place in this. I look around and I can see people from various camps across the country. And it is one of the most uplifting and rewarding. When Steve introduced, he said, I'd put my life on hold. I'll say yes. But there's this other side, which is, I remember when I first walked through the door marked activism, thinking, wow, I've been in the wrong room all my life. And shit, there's a thousand, oh sorry, there are children. There are a thousand more doors. And there is so much that requires our attention. But from once, um, I know, blissfully ignorant communities going about our lives, paying our taxes and doing our bit, and maybe believing the media, there are people in towns across the country who have woken up through fracking just because of this subject to realize that the media is owned by very few people and that maybe it prints more press releases than it prints anything else. And that academic institutions have their reports paid for. And therefore, when it says this is safe, maybe that's because someone paid for them to only look at the bits that would be safe and to not talk about the bits that weren't. And you will discover that many of your councillors are totally inept and know nothing of the subject. We've spent more time educating councillors than anything else in the last six years. And that your MPs will tow the party line. Fortunately, here we are nearly seven years in, and from having the Green Party on board, we now have Labour and Lib Dems. Every party except the Conservatives is on our side. Every union except the Gas Workers Union is now on our side. And it's written into the union. So if you're a member of a union, they have said that they will support the anti-fracking community and they will stand alongside us. And we see Unite banners and PCS banners and Teachers Union and Fire Brigades Union and the University and Colleges Union. Wherever we go, we are so well supported because we are right. And what about this, when you think about it? When we first started taking bites out of this industry, we thought, this is such a big job. This is huge. But in the meantime, before we can get our government to take um, us seriously, we'll nibble away at the edges, which we did in Ireland, Northern Ireland, Wales and Scotland, who now have bans and moratoriums in place. We have managed to chew down to just England, and just the Conservative Party and just the Gas Workers Union. We have won all that and we are phenomenal. <laughs> Fortunately, as you may have noticed, the Conservatives aren't doing too well at the moment. <laughs> They're looking more weak and wobbly than anything else. And we read the shareholders. And I think that um, when we started up at Preston New Road, where we've been for nearly a year now, every single day in action, then up at that site, one of the things we did in the early days was start going to the suppliers and asking them to please pull out of supplying this contract or we would have to consider them the same as the frackers and maybe start blockading their sites too. Eddie Stobart pulled out of supplying the uh, fracking industry and it dented the stock market hugely. 
because the frackers realized we might start getting a bit clever, a bit coordinated, and taking them out in many ways. So we have. So whatever you are in society and whatever you're doing, I promise there is a really rewarding role. I feel like a recruitment sergeant. It's great. You'll have no money, you'll be really cold, and you'll spend a lot of time at the side of a road, and maybe the police will be a bit mean, but you will stand alongside some of the most noble and courageous and honorable people you will ever meet. And you will live your life no longer thinking, where shall I go on holiday and what will I buy because you won't have any money. But you will end up thinking, I live with such purpose. And my children and my grandchildren will thank me. And I didn't sit back and take the easy ride. I will fight this every step of the way. Thank you. Thanks very much to Tina. Great speech. Okay, our, our next speaker is the parliamentary prospective candidate for Whittle West.